Hello, it's the Tinker that here with another 3D printing video. So let's assume you are trying to buy a 3D printer. Let's say it's an Ender 3, like mine. But you have your doubts, like how long will it last, what parts will you need to replace with time, and stuff like that. Well, mine is almost a year old, and I used it quite a lot. So let me show you what happened with it. So this is my Ender 3. As you can see, it has been customized a bit, but nothing really serious. I mean, there are some 3D printed parts, accessories mostly, like the holder for the Raspberry Pi and stuff like that, and some tool holders and whatnot. But basically, it's just a stock Ender 3. The two real custom parts are the flexible plate, which is by Irion. It's like a Wambam system, flex plate. This is just a cheaper Chinese version, but regardless, it's quite good quality. And I also replaced the extruder. Also, there are smaller parts that I needed to replace, namely the nozzles. Those are cheap. I mean, the default nozzles, assuming that you are using, let's say, budget parts. The nozzles are cheap and whether you want it or not, after some time they will just wear and you will have to replace them. So considering those replacements, this is my printer's current status. It's printing happily, to be honest. So what else did I need to do? Well, I created a few uh, high resolution stills and I will just show them one by one and explain them. So let's start with the nozzle. As I said before, after some time it will just wear and you will have to replace it. You can see it here. It doesn't look shiny or new at all. This nozzle will serve uh, for some time, then I will have to replace it. Luckily for me, replacing nozzles on the Ender 3 is pretty easy. Ok, now let's continue with other parts that will probably need replacements. We will get back to prices at the end of the video, so you will be able to see all the costs that you can expect, besides the filament of course. So next one, these belts. At some point in time they will probably need replacement, I mean they will lose their structural integrity and get loose and more loose and more loose and you wouldn't be able to print with them and to some extent you can compensate with the bad tensioner you cannot do that indefinitely so you will need to replace them to be honest replacing them can be a little bit of a hassle and can be intimidating to some but um, to be honest they are at least cheap so, do you see those four springs right under the heated bed? They are responsible for the bed leveling. In fact, they are pushing the heated bed upwards while those cogwheel-like things, they are just holding it down. So, balancing those two can help you with the bed leveling. Now, of course, the springs will, after some time, lose their rigidness and they will just become soft and you will have to replace them. In fact, my experience is that uh, they are losing their rigidness in a different, at a different rate, so the wheels are now not really balanced. Adjusting the wheels will obviously give you a chance to compensate for this for a long time, but after some time, again, you will have to replace those springs. Also, many industry owners suggest replacing them right away as soon as you get your printer, because those are just, well, average quality springs, nothing special. And here's the next part, or parts, that you want to replace at some point. So these little coolers. Point is, they are loud. They are spinning at a high speed, which also means they won't last long. Luckily for us, there are a lot of aftermarket options, starting with cheap ones, Chinese-made, non-branded, 
and the expensive ones made by Noctua and other companies. Replacing them is not too complicated and there's plenty of material. And by material, of course, I mean tutorials and whatnot. Also, they will last quite a while before you need to replace them. But as soon as you notice them getting stuck and producing weird noises and stuff like that, replace them because that will tremendously lower your print quality and can lead to nasty things, including fires and stuff like that. At the start of the video, I mentioned that I needed to replace the extruder. Well, the original extruder of the NDS3 is made from cheap plastic and won't last long. I mean, technically it won't get destroyed or break or anything like that. It will just lose structural integrity. The plastic parts will bend and uh, apparently the spring will also soften with time. So mine started skipping and it couldn't really push the filament the way it should have. So I replaced it with an all metal one and with a stronger spring. And now problem is solved. Okay, okay, let's uh, stay with this picture for a second. So you can see those two little wheels there. Actually, there's more than two of them on the end of the three. And uh, they are made from, I think, silicone or something like that. They're quite sturdy, but uh, according to my experience, they started to wear and um, lose a bit of material. So after some time, you will probably have to replace them. Now, both Creality and some other aftermarket vendors are styling replacement. And um, the sad news is they are a bit expensive for what they are. Just a cheap piece of plastic and metal, but still. Anyway, you will see at the end when I will show you the, the price table. And for the last part, I have left the most expensive replacement that you will probably have to make anyway. So is the print surface. The print surface that the industry comes with is kinda usable for like a few weeks or something like that. Then in my case, the PLA just started building up on it, like a thin layer by thin layer and basically I couldn't really clean it off with whatever I've tried. And I ended up with a layer that stops, I mean a uh, surface that stopped uh, sticking and I had uh, these adhesion problems and yeah, just the whole thing went down to hell. And yeah, that was the point when I decided that, okay, I will need that flex plate. So whatever you choose as a replacement, be prepared for this. And if you want to go for a quality replacement, yeah, it will cost you some bucks. And here we go. This is a quick calculation I have made based on purely on replacement parts. So no additional parts, no extras, uh, no whatever. It's just what I needed to replace because it was well needed to have the, thing, the printer functioning properly. So as you can see, the majority is basically the print surface. Yeah, it's pretty much the most important part. And sadly, what the industry came with didn't really last long. Also same with the extruder. And besides that, one year later, I still haven't had to replace the timing belt or the leveling springs or the hot end or a print surface fan. So it's just besides that, basically nozzles. Yeah, I use different nozzles, different sizes, not just uh, dot four millimeter ones, but uh, they are pretty much the cheap ones. And so far, I didn't really have problems with them. Obviously, if you want to go with super high quality prints and whatnot, and not into functional printing like uh, I do, then yeah, you will probably have to spend more than that on nozzles. And finally, maintenance. So what type of maintenance will you exactly need? Of course, you will have to clean your print bed. That's the most important. Then you will have to make sure that no screw gets loose or stuff like that. Then you will have bed leveling and as the photo shows, dust. Actually, against dust, the best solution is to have something like a printer enclosure. 
or you can just remove dust periodically from your printer with a can of compressed air or something like that. Many people also say cleaning your nozzle is uh, important too, but uh, to be honest, according to my experience, I didn't really have to do this. Okay, maybe for some fancy printing materials, but not for PLA. For PLA, you just heat up your nozzle and whatever was inside will just ooze out. And yeah, that's it, your nozzle is clean. To be honest, I never had a clogged nozzle with PLA. So let's wrap this video up. But before you start commenting and stuff like that, here's something you should consider. So first of all, why would you trust this video? Yeah, well, because um, I'm your average maker guy, or actually the newbie maker guy, who just brought his first 3D printer and uh, basically did some trial and error with it. And I'm sharing what I've learned. Also, I'm the typical end user who just want to print without spending days on upgrading printer and ordering fancy parts and stuff like that. And to be honest, I'm this green type of guy who wants to use PLA simply because I like the idea that PLA is biodegradable. So whatever you have heard in this video is, uh, again, based on my experience, at it's for PLA. Anyway, time to say goodbye and I can just only hope that you have learned something useful today. See you next time. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, hit like. If you want to help my channel and see more of my content, hit subscribe. If you want to check out behind the scenes and want to know more about me, then follow me on social media. You can find the links here. Thank you again and see you next time.